What's up everyone, it's Caddy with MoneyVest. So, lots to unpack in this video. We had the PPI numbers come out, retail sales numbers came out, ARM IPO took place on the day today as well. And the market's also pushing higher here on the day with the S&P 500 up a little bit over 84 basis points. We are slowly and steadily approaching that lower high, sitting at just over 4,500 now. And of course, the NASDAQ also pushing up over 81 basis points and the Dow Jones rallying almost 1% percent on the day pushing up over 330 points with the 10-year yields just sitting under 4.3 percent so hope you guys are doing great i did a video on cpi and ppi earlier and going over the potential consequences of healthcare insurance and energy prices and how that's going to play a role in the upcoming prints so make sure that you do check that out as well because it's going to be a very very important video it's going to give you a little bit more of an understanding of the adjustments that's that's been happening with healthcare insurance um, that has obviously dropped over 33 percent not to mention that energy prices are also down over 40 percent from their highs which also resulted in energy prices oil prices fuel oil electricity everything coming down which uh, helped inflation cool off but now it's starting to reaccelerate once again so that video was posted earlier today. Definitely check that out. If you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. And of course, getting access to all the buying alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, everything is going to be included with the link down below and we'll love to have you on board. So when it comes to the market, so ARM IPO debuted today and it was up a little bit over 51%. It pretty much closed at over $63.59 with over 130 million shares traded. And of course, it pushed up on the back of a lot of sentiment and hype around artificial intelligence. But when it comes to PPI numbers, we obviously saw a little bit of an increase um, versus the consensus expectations. So core PPI, which excludes food and energy, increased 0.2% in line with what was the anticipated by economist. However, the headline number was 0.7%, more than the expected 0.4%, and we are now sitting back over 1.2%, 1.4% on a year-over-year -year basis. And uh, that comes after the August Consumer Price Index on Wednesday showed core CPI, which excludes food and energy, came in slightly above expectations on a monthly basis as well. And retail sales also came in strong, jumping in 0.6% against the 0.1% consensus and excluding for autos, retail sales rose 0.6% last month, forecasted was 0.4%. So Hogan uh, pretty much mentioned that uh, I think you've got the perfect framework of inflation heading in the right direction, but the economy not falling apart. And that really paints the picture that the Federal Reserve has done the right thing and we may well be orche orchestrating that elusive soft landing at least that's the impression we get this week uh, and of course the markets right now are pricing in about a 97 percent probability that rates are going to remain unchanged next week and next week is the fomc meeting on september 20th which obviously is going to be very critical for the markets as well now soft landing wise yes that's really what it looks like right now because the economy continues to be very strong we are seeing strong economic growth unemployment rate continues to stay at a 50-year low and inflation also is somewhat moving in the right direction but it's now starting to kind of hit some hit some breaks as we are starting to see some acceleration in headlines so it's starting to move back higher energy prices are on the move back higher as well and uh, core is eventually going to get affected if energy prices stay persistently elevated which is going to affect all the other parts of the economy all the other compositions of core CPI directly or indirectly. It will eventually if energy prices don't come down. Once again, shelter has been slowing down a little bit, but not fast enough. Um, and of course, that adjustment from the healthcare insurance goes away in October. So all of that obviously is going to play a bigger, bigger and bigger role as months go by. And of course, future prints are going to be very important, not to mention that the Federal Reserve um, could see that as something that warrants another rate hike potentially in 2023. So we'll again find out um, later this week, uh, later next week, and of course uh, in the weeks to come, in the months to come, what Federal Reserve ends up doing with respect to interest rates. Now, ARM climbs 25% in NASDAQ debut after pricing IPO at $51 per share. So again, the ticker symbol is going to be ARM, and uh, SoftBank still holds over 90% of ARM's stock. And uh, the chip design company is valued at a steep premium relative to the rest of the semiconductor market, something I've already mentioned, and I think the valuation's still a little too high for this company. 
Now, Taiwan slams Elon Musk, and this right here is something uh, they tweeted. They basically said that Taiwan is not for sale, and it's not part of China because uh, I think Elon Musk just made a made a comment in the All In Summit, which had said that Taiwan is an integral part of China. So that right there, of course, uh, Taiwan not taking that, um, uh, you know, in, in Taiwan, taking that in a literal sense and obviously saying that Taiwan is not for sale and it's not part of China either. So a little bit of that political um, uh, and, of course, geopolitics kind of played in because Taiwan obviously has had a lot of pressure from China over the years. And, uh, of course, TSMC is a very integral to the entire semiconductor industry. That's where most of the chips are manufactured. But uh, but I found it really funny that, that Taiwan is slamming Elon Musk over this small issue. But this right here is the entire market. So most stocks green. We had Meta, Google, Tesla, AT&T, Oracle, Microsoft, Apple, energy sector, real estate, industrials, everything pushing higher except for small pockets within the market. So it seems like Netflix here did break down almost 3%. Visa was down over 2.5%, AMD also pulling back, but nonetheless, the entire market did really well um, in, in pushing higher. So this right here, all sectors, all 11 sectors in the S&P 500 were green in the last one week. We've got technology and industrials, the only two sectors that are struggling. And in the last one month, we've got only three sectors, defensive, healthcare, and industrials pulling back. Everything else is up. Energy is the one that's kind of leading the way, of course, on the back of oil prices. Orange juice for the win, uh, pushing higher very much. Coffee prices, we got sugar, uh, we got feeder cattle, oats, silver, everything pushing up and natural gas volatility and lean hogs also selling off. And Bitcoin here back over 26,600 and Ether back over 1,600 as well. So going over to uh, crude oil, looks like it continues to power through here. $91 a barrel right now, uh, continues to push higher in the month of September. This thing is now up over 8.7%. Just take a look at this green candle. I mean, how are people going to sit there and just be like, oh yeah, that's nothing. That's not gonna affect inflation. Like how? How is that not going to affect inflation is my question. Like if we were, we were almost at the same level as back in September of last year. Um, not to mention if, if crude oil sees maybe another 29, 30% rally, we're literally back to the same level as we were back in June of last year when inflation was at its peak at over 9%. So this is a sizable move. This, this is not something that you can ignore and just be like, hey, inflation's on the way down. We're going to get a soft landing. Crude oil is on the move, folks. We are seeing gas prices, energy prices, once again, reaccelerating, which is not good news, which is just straight up. It's literally numbers. It's charts. It's facts. And 44% move to the upside. It's not good. And of course, we know that the... Uh, Petroleum reserves in the U.S. have been depleting pretty significantly. There's not a lot left. Uh, and as a result, you can see that a lot of individual stocks, energy stocks, have moved higher. Like, for example, Occidental has rallied over 20% from its lows. This right here, Devon Energy, not so much, but it's still up a little bit over 14% from its lows. Chevron, up a little bit over uh, from 147, up over 14, 15% from its lows. And Exxon Mobil. You can see it's pretty much coming back up to its 52-week high. Uh, $119.92 is the 52-week high, and it's up a little bit over 19, almost 20%, right, from its lows. So crude oil is on the way up. It's now trading past $90 a barrel, and the next resistance and target really is going to be 93 So 93 bucks is going to be that next target. Um, and then, of course, all the way up to that triple-digit uh, resistance at close to $119, $120 per barrel talking about uh, crypto so ether here pushing back over 1630s uh, and bitcoin here also back over 26,600 both of them kind of validating that support and pushing right back up from those levels and next resistance going to be at 28,000 for bitcoin and for ether that's going to be sitting roughly at around uh, 1700 for ethereum uh, talking about the markets so this right here is the overall chart for the s&p 500 on the daily basis you can see that we did get up to that resistance and now it's going to start becoming really interesting between the bulls and the bears and whether we get a breakout or a rejection at these levels if you get a breakout that's great there is some momentum and there's a possibility for us to retest highs of 4600 of course but if we do get a rejection here that means that this lower high is very much valid and it is potential um there is potential for us to come down to as low as 43 4200 in the future so very important level is going to be this right here that's the lower high 
Uh, that's the lower high and the lower low sitting in, inside this downtrend, which we are in still. We're not out of the woods yet. And of course, we've got 43.50 to watch as a resistance and a support level sitting put at 43.26. Uh, talking about the Nasdaq here, so very similar story. Uh, it's in a short-term downtrend right now, so lower highs and lower lows. So pushing higher today, that's good. And this is going to be that lower high to pay attention to inside this downtrend, of course, all the way up to as much as this resistance at 14,000 and a support level staying put at roughly around 13,150. So those right there are going to be some levels to pay attention to for the Nasdaq. Again, we're not out of the woods yet because we're still in the context of this very much of a downtrend. Apple here, on the other hand, pushing higher, up over 88 basis points, perfectly getting validated at that support. Uh, so if you come over here for Apple, uh, this right here is the daily chart. You'll notice that perfectly, excuse me, perfectly validated that support here, um, you know, at around $170, $475, even though it did breach down that level, and it has done that in the past as well. Broke down on August 18th, August 19th, it was down a little bit over, I think, 20 or 15% uh, from its highs, about 12.5%. And right now, again, we got rejected at that lower high and then sold right back down. And this right here is going to be that green rectangle of that potential support in the 170s. So 175, 176 is going to be that support all the way down to as low as 157, 158 for Apple. Amazon here getting a little bit of that rejection, uh, which is not a surprise. I mean, take a look. I mean, this is just crazy, right? 146 was the resistance that we talked about a high for the day just under 146 and we got up to that level and then of course getting a little bit of that rejection uh, selling right back down so that is going to be that level to pay attention to for amazon if you get a breakout it's going to put us on the map for 170 but right now 145 146 very critical resistance support level next is going to be down to 136 137 for amazon talking about tesla here and tesla on the day also pushing higher 1.75 percent so still battling through that resistance here so still kind of coming up to that lower high over here sitting roughly at 277 so that's the level to really be paying attention to and of course support level is going to stay put down to 260 all the way down to as low as 242 for tesla so this right here obviously has been the lower high and the lower low and a very nice potential rally here over 30 percent but right now we are coming up to that resistance at 277 with the support level sitting roughly at 260s for tesla Talking about NVIDIA here, and NVIDIA on the day up over 21 basis points, but red candle on a green day. Again, there is some uh, weakness in the overall price action. We have started to come right back down with that negative divergence forming. Resistance all the way up to 500, support at 400. It's got a $100 range within which it's been trading at. So uh, that's going to be that level to watch for NVIDIA. And I've already mentioned, I think the valuation is a little too steep for this company. Advanced micro devices still in a downtrend, still very much making lower highs and lower lows. So getting a little bit of that rejection there on the day down about 1%. Support level is going to stay put just about under $100. So this right here is going to be that support all the way down to as low as 80 bucks and a resistance obviously at that lower high to as much as $119, $120 per share for advanced micro devices. Talking about PayPal, and PayPal actually had a pretty strong day today, up over 2.5%, back over $64. So very proud of PayPal here on the day, pushing up to over 64.45. Next resistance and target is going to be all the way up to $67 to $70. So got a huge gap to fill here, obviously, and of course got a huge resistance to also pay attention to um, for PayPal. Of course, support level is going to stay, but at $57, $58 per share for this company. Uh, talking about Square and Square here also on the day pushing down uh, about half a percent similar to what we have witnessed for AMD, Amazon, a lot of these companies that are basically getting sold off. So unlike PayPal, Square definitely struggling right now. Lots of support here inside this green rectangle. Resistance is going to be all the way up to $67, $68 per share. And right now we're basically just consolidating um, sideways at that green rectangle, which is a very strong area of demand and a support in my opinion for Square. Uh, Meta Platforms, very strong day, up a little bit over uh, 1%, 2%, $311, so very nice move to the upside. I feel like it's starting to break outside of this downtrend, so this is no longer valid in my opinion. And the next target and resistance is going to be back up to 326, and that's going to be in line with its previous high and the 52-week high for Meta. So 326 is going to be that next level to watch. Uh, talking about Netflix here. And Netflix on the day, definitely selling off quite aggressively and uh, coming down to low 400s. 
and uh, starting to break down. And uh, this was on the back of the comments from the management team saying that their um, advertising revenue is not as strong as what they expected it to be. And uh, which, in my opinion, is fair because it's not um, you know easy thing to do. I mean, uh, there's uh, there's Meta, Google, the companies that have perfected this advertising business in years. Netflix can't expect to do that in six months, right? So it's gonna take time. It's going to take a uh, a lot of trial and error and a lot of um, reiterations of their existing platform and the way they do this uh, in order to get it right. And for that reason, right now, of course, selling off on the pressures of these comments. But next support really is going to be down to as low as 379, 380s, resistance all the way up to 452. And this is also going to turn into a resistance now at close to $410 per share for uh, for Netflix moving forward. Uh, next one on the list is going to be Google and Google here pushing higher. Tomorrow, by the way, is quadruple witching. So that's something to keep in mind. Quadruple witching, we've got index options, stock options, futures, and uh, index futures, everything expiring on the same day after close tomorrow. So the total volume is going to be significantly higher towards the end of the day. And Google here, it seems like most likely is going to end up in the money. And 144 is going to be that resistance next. That's going to be that next target. Support level is going to stay put at 131, 132 for Google, all the way down to 127 for this as well. And finally, talking about Microsoft. And Microsoft here up over 79 basis points, starting to kind of break out of that lower high that we talked about. So this right here is potentially going to be invalid now. And the next target is going to be at 351 for Microsoft and support level is going to stay put at 314 for this company. Uh, talking about Enphase and Enphase Energy here, um, basically up over 2.2%, so $122. Resistance is going to be all the way up to 128, of course, seeing some decent moves back to the upside. But dollar cost averaging a little bit on Enphase as well. It's back inside that green rectangle and, of course, that good deal area, in my opinion, for Enphase. So lots of opportunity in that stock for the long term, in my view. Uh, talking about Shopify, Shopify is seeing some momentum back up over 1.25%. So it still needs to come down and fill a little bit of that gap. But resistance is going to be at 66 $67. Support level is going to stay put at 54 bucks for Shopify. So the bottom line is we did get numbers that were somewhat okay. Uh, not the best, but not the worst either. Tomorrow is quadruple witching. So pay attention to that. And next week is FOMC, which is going to be very important for the markets as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas. Everything's going to be included. Um, and of course, members only private videos with the intrinsic value spreadsheets as always happy investing and I will see you all in the next video.